Hello and welcome to a demonstration of how we can use Crimson 3.1 to push data using the MQTT protocol into the uh, ignition SCADA system from inductive automation. I'm going to uh, start with a blank machine here essentially and I'm going to install ignition. I'm going to install the prerequisites for it. I'm going to show you how to set up the MQTT distributor and connector and then I'm going to show you how to set up Crimson to push data and to validate that it is working. So let's get started with part one. Okay, so let's start by installing Ignition, or more precisely, uh, let's start by installing the Java runtime environment, which is required by Ignition. Now, this is not the, um, the same as the plugin that you necessarily stick in your browser. We need the 64-bit version here. We need a specific, uh, we need it from a specific location. I will include a link in the description or the enclosing email, but what we're gonna do is we want the Windows 64-bit version. We want the XZ. so we're gonna download that. Okay, so it's downloaded. Let's run it. Allow it to make changes. We don't need to change anything. And then we let it do its thing. Okay, so Java is installed. We can now go to the uh, inductive uh, automation homepage. And we're going to click on download ignition. And that takes us to this page. There's a little orange button. We're going to press that. And that's going to download the Ignition Executable. If it's the first time you've done it, you might be asked to register. You'll have to enter your name and uh, uh, email and phone number and blood group and all those wonderful things. So let's run the setup program. We accept the license agreement. That's good. We'll use Ignition, not the little one. Typical is good for now. And let's let it go. And we're going to start Ignition. You can see it runs a little uh, command prompt to start the uh, gateway service. There's actually quite a few services running in the background. And what it's going to do is it's going to attach to one of these services via the web browser. And that's how we're going to do a lot of the administration. Okay, so part two is we are going to install the MQTT connectors. So for that, we're going to go back to that uh, download page that we have for Ignition. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and we're going to look for uh, a couple of files, the MQTT distributor and the MQTT engine. We could use a third-party distributor if we wanted to, uh, and if you're interested, I can do another video on how that works. Right now, though, I'm going to use the inbuilt one, and I'm going to use the engine. So I am going to save these, and I'm just going to save them to my desktop. These are not files that will be automatically open, so you don't just want to download them, you want to put them somewhere. So we'll let those download. And now they've both been downloaded and virus checked or whatever goes on in the background, we can close this. We can go back to our uh, Ignition um, web client and we can go into configure. Now we're going to have to sign in. The default is just admin. So here we are, and we're going to say install or upgrade a module. There's lots of modules here. Install or upgrade a module is the link we want right at the bottom. Browse, MQTT distributor, install. Yes, we trust the license. Yes, we trust the software. That installed, and let's do another one. This time we want the engine. Set the license and that is installed as well. So those are now installed and we can see if we look here on the left hand side we now have the distributor and the engine. There's not really a lot to set up here. I mean architecturally the way this works is the distributor is responsible for receiving uh, uh, incoming uh, publications and subscription requests relating to MQTT and the engine is the the part of Ignition that subscribes to the distributor and listens for the topics that other people are going to be publishing. So uh, setting up the engine, basically all you have to do is make sure it's enabled. And then if you want to allow tag rights, you have to go and turn these things off. These are blocking commands, so when they're off, you can do rights. Um, and that's about it, really. 
it's already set up to talk to the local distributor. The namespace is already set up, so we don't worry about that. If we go into the distributor itself, well, there's nothing much to set up here. It's already listening on TCP on 1883. Uh, we're not going to use WebSockets. We're not going to use TLS. Uh, the, there's a default user already set up. Uh, the password is change me by default. So admin and change me. And um, that's pretty much it. So we can leave that. There is one thing, however, we have to do. It is listening on port 1883. And the Windows firewall is going to block that unless we turn it off or unless we had an exception. So let's go ahead and do that. So to add an exception to the Windows Firewall, we're just going to go into our Start menu, that's our Firewall. Open the Windows Defender Firewall. We are going to go to Advanced Settings, and we are going to uh, go to our Inbound Rules, and we're going to add a rule. And the rule is going to open a port. Um, that port is going to be TCP. 1883. Uh, we are going to allow the connection. We don't care which uh, type of network we're on. We're going to call this MQTT. And that is that. So now it's set up and we'll be able to connect. So now let's go ahead and see how we set up Crimson to uh, actually make use of this. Okay, so let's open Crimson, and we're going to go and set up a database. I'm using an edge controller, which is nice. I'm going to give it a, uh, oops, an auto config name. Uh, I'm going to go into tags. I'm going to create myself four numeric tags. Go on the display page. Let's get those four tags. Drag them on here. Broaden them. Set them all to data entry. Oops. Go into the page properties and under actions on update, I'm going to implement tag two. Oops, two tag three. We'll pop the two and tag four. Uh, and now I'm going to download those up to my device. And because I've used the auto config, it's very simple now just to come into here and say HTTP oops, tag local. And there's our web server. Uh, we're in remote view right now. I didn't turn on uh, remote controls. Let's go into our web server and turn on remote control. Download that. Go back in here. There it's reconnected, and sure enough, we can enter data. So we know that's working. So now let's go across back into communications, and here is our SparkPlug MQTT connector. Not a lot to do, really. We just go in and enable the agent. We need to know the IP address or host name of uh, the device we're talking to. In this case, it's our local PC. So let's just use IP config. And there it is, 192.168.1217. So download that. And I'm going to leave the network settings at default, the device data at default, and tag data. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to drag those tags across. I'm going to enable writes, and I'm going to download it. Now let's go into Ignition and see if it's worked. To do that, we go back into the Ignition uh, web client and we click on Launch Designer. And that's going to run a little Java program that will uh, allow us to play with uh, what's going on under the hood. So we say admin and password. We're going to create a new project. We're going to say test. We don't really care much more about it. And here we are. And the interesting thing is this tag browser. And if we go into tag browser under all providers, MQTT engine, edge nodes, I'm just going to refresh this. There we have Crimson devices, Crimson node one, tags. And sure enough, here are our tags. And you can see they're updating. Now, uh, there's something left in there actually from an earlier demo that I did. I'm going to get rid of, so don't worry about that. But you can see those are the four tags that we have coming across. And as you can see, they are updating. And if I go into my web browser, and I set this one to, I don't know, 5,000. And I come back in. Sure enough, it's 5,000. If I set this to 1, 2, 3, 4, it's going to prompt me that I need to enable read-write mode, which I did. And then I come in here, and there enough it is, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's as simple as that, really. Uh, the nice thing, or a nice thing, is if we happen to have a, uh, a hierarchy of tags in our system, and we bring those across like that, then we come back into here. I'm going to delete the node uh, so that it can recreate its tag structure and then just refresh it again. And now you can see, look, those tags are organized just as they are uh, in your tag structure. So all of 
that is there. And that's it pretty much. It works with strings, it works with floating point numbers, it works with integers. It just essentially works. Uh, a few more details on what you can set up. Uh, service here, these are the names. As you, This is the client ID. There has to be a, a unique client ID for each device. Group ID and node ID essentially define how this appears in the uh, browse hierarchy here. Uh, admin and password, the default password is change me and that works as you would expect. Default network settings are fine. This sets whether you want device data broadcast. The device data appears here under this little tab here. Uh, it has a status on the device, that's always okay right now. And then it has any cellular um, connection data and GPS location data. At the moment that isn't provided, that's only in pre-beta so we don't have that out there. Um, the rest of these are tag sets. You're going to have up to four tag sets that you can broadcast. Uh, we allow four because you can set different update rates then. Maybe you want some things updated all the time. Maybe you want some things only updated every now and then. Uh, so here we're doing this one periodically. On uh, one second we can go down to 0.1 if we want to be a bit faster. Or we could do it triggered so that we'd send those tags when we push the button. Uh, we can enable writes on some sets and on other sets and say you can set up to four of those. And that's pretty much it. It just works. Now you see, there's the data. Uh, it's live, it's working, and we can uh, go in both directions. And there you go. It's back in here. So it is as simple as that. That is how you get Crimson 3.1 to communicate with uh, Ignition Skater using MQTT. Thanks. Bye-bye.